Hi guys, let's continue with proteins and biological molecules. In the previous video, we completed hemoglobin. In this video, we will be completing myoglobin and collagen, both very important proteins. So let's get started. Myoglobin, it is the specialized tertiary structure of a protein, having polar R groups facing outward, okay, having a soluble nature in water. Hence, it is a type of globular protein. Pretty simple, okay. Since water is also polar, and it also has a polar R groups facing outward, so they polar polar attract. So hence, it's soluble in water. Moving further. Now let's look into the structure of myoglobin. It has one alpha globin chain and one heme group. This heme group is attached to that alpha globin chain and hence it can bind with one oxygen molecule because one heme group can combine with one oxygen molecule only. Okay. However, it shows a much higher affinity for oxygen than hemoglobin. This means that it holds on to the oxygen for much longer than hemoglobin. Uh, and releases that oxygen molecule only when there's a very uh, high demand or a uh, very deficient medium surrounding this uh, myoglobin okay. only then it will release its oxygen molecule okay now this is the reason uh, that it acts as a storage protein in the skeletal muscles storing O2 within the muscles and releasing it only when the concentration of oxygen is extremely low okay. and this will happen in cases obviously when we need uh, when the body needs a high amount of oxygen uh, as very high muscular activity and that example is during exercise okay, okay. now let's look on a model the structure of a model structure of myoglobin so this is the model structure okay. here as you can see uh, we have an alpha globin chain okay okay uh, this pattern okay this is completely random this thing this thing is completely random okay like it's it's something else it's just for a model display that i have made this so you can make any design okay okay so here's alpha globin chain here we have heme group attached to this chain and it shows a very high affinity with an oxygen molecule as shown here okay now let's move on to collagen okay Okay, now collagen is a fibrous protein, okay, that means it has non-polar R groups facing outwards and hence it's insoluble in water, okay. So it's the most abundant protein of the body, around 40%, okay. It is involved as an important structural protein in the making of skin, tendons, ligaments, bones cartilages and walls of blood vessels okay now let's see how this is formed okay or the structure of this collagen molecule so each collagen molecule okay it's made up of three polypeptide chains which are strongly held together through hydrogen and disulfide bonds twisted into a rope-like helical structure named as triple helix structure like this okay. this you can see three 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 polypeptide chains and they are twisted around like a rope okay through hydrogen and disulfide bonds into a triple helix structure okay each polypeptide chain okay each each one of those okay 
each one of those it shows a loose helix secondary structure with almost every third amino acid being glycine okay now the reason behind this is because glycine has the smallest r group okay which helps in placing the three chains these three chains as close as possible okay and this provides more stability and strength and uh, collagen uh, also contains uh, high proportions of amino acids the two uh, amino acids one is um, proline okay. this is also present in high amount and the other is hydroxyproline okay Hydroxyproline. Now, what happens is that the R groups in these amino acids, okay, they repel each other, repel each other, and it leads to um, the stability. Okay, it adds to the stability of collagen. Adds to the stability of collagen okay moving on this is a, a model presentation of how every third amino acid is glycine you can see here okay now many collagen molecules okay many of these uh, triple helix collagen molecules they are further strongly held together side by side through disulfide bonds to form a stronger structure called fibril. And these uh, adjacent molecules have staggered ends, okay? means covalent bonds between ending and beginning parts of adjacent molecules. And this is done to avoid formation of weak spots in between. Okay. let's just uh, view this like this okay these are staggered ends you can see between these uh, triple helix structures okay. joined together collagen molecules are joined together form this whole thing is called a fibril okay. and these are uh, these are your disulfide bonds okay now many fibrils are further strongly held together through covalent bonds to form thick and strong covalent fibers collagen fibers okay. having very high tensile strength okay and flexible nature tensile strength that means they can be pulled easily without breaking okay they can withstand a very high uh, pressure okay now here's a short note that's that different parts of the body had different arrangements of collagen fibers okay and this is according to the requirements for example tendons and ligaments have parallel arrangement of these fibers okay this provides tensile strength in one direction okay. whereas collagen fibers in skin are arranged at random angles to provide multi-dimensional tensile strength okay. so according to the requirement we have different arrangements of uh, collagen fibers okay to fit into the uh, structure or the functional property of that thing okay so that's it for this video we will meet in the next video take care